Hello, everybody. Welcome on this uh, first live uh, session on my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, it's open data day, so we have some special guests here. Um, and uh, feel free uh, in the YouTube uh, chat to, uh, to post your questions while we are um, discussing and uh, demonstrating the WAP plugin today. So let's make a little uh, introduction round. I'm Hans van der Krust. I'm a senior lecturer in GIS and uh, spatial data management at IHC Delft. And um, let's give the floor to uh, Natalia. Please introduce yourself. Okay, so yeah, as Hans says, I'm Natalia Cárdenas. I am an agricultural engineer with a master also at IHC Delft. And now, nowadays, we are working here in, in the WAC plugin project. So it's where we are going to present today. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go to Fabian. Uh, thank you, Hans, for the invitation and the space. I'm Fabian. I come from Colombia. I'm a mechatronic engineer doing my master in artificial intelligence and robotics. Happy to be here. Nice. Thank you. Let's go to Akshay. Thank you, Hans, and I'm sorry if there is any noise from my side. And I'm Akshay Donti, and I'm also a recent graduate from master's degree in artificial intelligence and robotics, and uh, I'm part of the web plugin team right now. Okay, thank you. So um, it has been a while uh, since we uh, we have been in a live session uh, together, I think. So uh, maybe you can give a bit of a heads up of the latest developments with uh, the web plugin. Okay, sure. Uh, so for those that maybe doesn't know, like, don't know exactly what the web plugin does. So it's a plugin that we developed that connects uh, the QGIS software and the Whopper portal that is a, an FAO a platform that provides um, data uh, for Africa and Middle East in different uh, levels of resolution. So it's focused for agricultural purposes. So what we developed was like a plugin that can just connect uh, directly the, the portal, the Whopper portal with the QGIS and it makes it easier, easier for users of Whopper to just put it in QGIS directly and then just um, use it for their own like wishes and these things. So. Uh, we already released the first version like a few months ago and now today exactly today we are ex uh, launching the the second version of the web plugin we are really excited about this because this has like um really cool things and a lot of improvements because our first version of course was like the 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 like the testing case and now yeah we include a lot of a lot of cool things. I don't know if I start explaining it now or we maybe mention it later. Well, maybe you can give a little heads up of cool things that so as a teaser for the people who are watching now. Yeah, so for uh, making it easier for the users, uh, we are filtering now the data. So as I mentioned before, uh, uh, the portal has like um, a huge uh, catalog and different uh, levels of resolution. So before we were not so clear in how to search for the data. So now for the user it's easier because they can filter the data in the levels, uh, in some cases the countries, also the time frame, the time, the time level, they and then can uh, save it in their own space, in their own folder. And also, for example, we also are giving them the, the, the possibility to the user to select a polygon, the area, or even to do a bookmark. And it's easier for, for the users just to select exactly just the data that they want and don't like download an entire roster of the continent that will take a lot of space and a lot of time for downloading. So this is one of the things that we are including nowadays. What else? We are including also more uh, indicators. So the WAP plugin has two main features. The first one is the WAP, WAPR catalog. That is the one that is going to uh, help the user to download directly the, 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 the data sets from WAPR to QGIS. And the indicators calculator features. This, this feature, uh, the indicators calculator, 
gives like the possibility to the users to just um, do some water accounting and productivity assessment to their areas. So um, before we had it, but now we uh, also make it easier for the, for the user to use it. And also we included more, more indicators. So it's just more complete. Nice. Well, I think we're all quite eager to see uh, what uh, what has been implemented and to, to try it today in this uh, live session. Uh, feel free uh, to, to ask questions in the chat if you have any uh, questions. You can also introduce yourself if you're watching. Um, meanwhile, I think we can uh, move to, uh, to the demonstration, what everybody's uh, waiting for. And then, uh, meanwhile, we'll also introduce a little bit what uh, Vapor is about, because we also need to look at, uh, at Vapor um, and to see how we can use uh, QGIS to use the, the Vapor data, as uh, Natalia explained, with all these cool new features. So let's uh, have a look at QGIS. So here we have a fresh uh, install of uh, QGIS. And uh, um, yeah, it's also important to, to notice that, uh, that we support uh, Ukraine in uh, what's happening in the world. So let's uh, not forget about it and stand with uh, Ukraine. Um, so I have a clean QGIS install here. And uh, the first thing what I'm going to do is to look for the plugin in the plugin uh, manager. And um, of course, I've been in touch with uh, the, um, the team here. Um, you need to first go to the uh, experimental plugins. So I'm going to check this box. And uh, then I go back to uh, all and I search here for lab plugin. And then I can find it here. So it's still an experimental version. Uh, it has some uh, information here. Some people gave ratings, also very nice, but uh, you see it has been updated to version 2.0. And what's also important if you download plugins, there's always this more info. If you click on this, you go to the homepage of the plugin. Here you uh, see that. And uh, in this case, the GitHub, at the end of the session, we'll get back to, uh, to that. And uh, we'll be guided through the documentation that is available. But I'm now going to install the uh, plugin. And that's as easy as this. And uh, what you can see now is this little button here that appeared, the WAP plugin button appeared here in the toolbar. Um, makes more sense to have some background uh, map here. The only thing I installed here in this profile was the map tiler plugin because I find it so cool that I want to show you also a little bit to have a nice backdrop. Um, there's a video from last QGIS Open Day, um, which explains how to use the map tiler plugin. But I want a nice satellite background. Uh, I use it as a raster tile. So put it here. Let's zoom to, uh, to Africa. And uh, I want some uh, borders on it to distinguish countries. And there's this open street map here. And this is a vector tile. So I add it. Takes a little to load. But once it's loaded, we don't just get, uh, you can ignore this, this error. It's probably a style that doesn't work. Um, but you can see already the labels from OpenStreetMap. But if I uh, put this on the top, one moment, move to move to top here, then I can see uh, all OpenStreetMap data and also uh, styled uh, in the way you're used to it uh, by looking at uh, OpenStreetMap. Um, but this is not the pictures that you get with the Quick Map Services plugin, for example. In this case, I have uh, some layers here, so I can remove the background. And I can um, remove everything that I don't want to see, or I, want, I can change uh, the styling. I can change the, the label settings here. So I'm just going to remove all the polygon uh, filling here, because I just want the country boundaries and lines on it to have a little bit of uh, context for what we are going to uh, download. Uh, with the WAP plugin. Well, that should be okay like this. So the first thing uh, that we need to do is to uh, sign in in uh, the WAP plugin, because if I open this, it will open a, the WAP plugin dialog. And the first tab here shows uh, the sign in. 
and it needs uh, the token from your Vapor account. So I go to, uh, to Vapor and um, we'll provide uh, the links in, um, in the comments of this video. But if you simply Google Vapor, you'll uh, end up quickly on this uh, FAO uh, Vapor website where um, you can find all the, the data that we can also uh, download with the plugin. So there's a catalog here of all the data that is available. And it comes with metadata. So if you click on it, then it will give you additional information and you can download it. Um, but then you'll have the whole uh, map of Africa and Middle East. Uh, you can use a OGC link. Um, so these are other ways, the traditional way of uh, using uh, Vapor without uh, the plugin. But if you're a GIS specialist, I think the, the plugin makes it really easy, as we will see uh, in a bit. So that's uh, the catalog. And um, you can query data for, uh, for a location. Uh, if you click on a location, for example, you can get uh, here uh, the value. You can also create a time series. So let's say I want this from uh, 2009 to 2021 for that location, 2022, then I can uh, run it and it will uh, return a graph with, in this case, the gross biomass water productivity trend uh, through time. So really nice, useful um, data source. Um, but for using this in the uh, plugin, we need to uh, have an account. All right, there's one more thing I need to explain. There are three levels here. The 250 meter uh, resolution data is available for, um, uh, for the entire area covered by Vapor. So that's Africa and the Middle East. Then there's um, some areas with uh, 100 meter data that you can see here. And there are a few areas with uh, 30 meter data for specific case studies that uh, are in projects that we are working on. So we can, for example, choose Koga and Ethiopia and then we'll see the results for um, that area here. And that's then at uh, 30 meter resolution. Now, if we want to use this in the plugin, I go here to uh, my wrapper after I made an account, I go to my profile and I can generate here an API token. It's a private token, but uh, I will uh, remove it after the video. Uh, because you can also revoke it, but I'm going to use this one for um, the plugin and later I will revoke it. So this one will be a void. And then I go back to the plugin, to the plugin screen here, and I can simply uh, paste the token here and click uh, sign in. And then it says, API token confirmed access granted. And that means from now on, I can uh, use the data uh, through the plugin. And I can also save the token. So not every time I need to uh, fill it again. So here it's now saved in uh, memory. And now each time that I open a web plugin, I can click load token. It will look for the location where it stored it. And uh, you don't need to uh, bother about that too much. Now there are two more tabs here, uh, Vapor catalog. And that is for downloading the different uh, Vapor data. We'll go through that in a bit. And there's the indicators calculator with a whole set of indicators that we can uh, calculate after downloading the data from Vapor. So let's uh, give it a try and download some uh, data from uh, Vapor. And um, let's uh, choose an area in, um, in Ghana, for example. And the uh, tile server is building the picture here. Let me zoom a bit out. And uh, meanwhile, I can choose here, um, here workspace. This, these are different workspace, but we will only focus on, on WAPOR here. And uh, we can filter here the level that we want to use. So I'm going to use here uh, level one first, so the 250 meter data. And uh, I can put here a time filter and for this first example that I want to show you, I'm interested in uh, annual data. Um, decadal is every 10 days. I don't know what long-term is. Natalia, what, uh, what is long-term? Um, I, 
I I'm not exactly, but that's how some of the data from Whopper is provided, but not maybe not static. Sure. Yeah, maybe some static data sets. Yeah. That uh, monthly and uh, seasonal. So let's try first annual. And uh, for level one, you don't have the country filter because that's for the level three data. And uh, we can choose here uh, which uh, data we want to download. And I'm going to download here the uh, precipitation. And because it's annual, it's, uh, of course, time interval year. And I can choose here a year. So uh, let's do 2021. That's the newest year in the database. And uh, I can change here an output path. So let me save it here and create a new folder. Let's call it WAP. So now all the data that I create will be saved to this uh, WAP folder. And each uh, data type has a file extension that's automatically uh, given and that will be recognized later when we use the indicators. So this says level one, precipitation, annual. Uh, but I can give it a prefix, and it's always useful to do it if you want to recognize it later. So it's uh, wise to add the year, and uh, you could also add the place or other things. Uh, but you can uh, basically put anything there in the, in the file name. And uh, here, now you can choose the area for which you want to uh, download it. And uh, you can use the entire uh, canvas extent, or you can uh, digitize a uh, polygon. So let me just uh, digitize a polygon. Then you need to uh, uncheck this box. And then I go to um, get edges. And now I can draw a polygon here. And it's not like the QGIS tool for making polygons, so it will automatically uh, close it. So you don't need to click right. That's, that's what I found out. Um, let's go back to the window. So if you are done with making your polygon, then you can say save polygon coordinates. And then it detected 10 uh, edges here. And I can choose download. And here's where the magic happens. It will download the data from uh, Vapor. And um, now it's downloaded it's at 100%, raster download complete. And I now need to change the path here to what we are using. And then it will recognize in the drop down all the data that you have downloaded. So here I have this level one precipitation, click loading canvas, and there we have it. Uh, this is chirps data, so here is just one pixel. <laughs> so I should have yeah, that's what I was going to say, because this is yeah. level uh, one is to mm -hmm. 50 meters of resolution. Yeah. So of course, the, the polygon, it was too small. Uh -huh. and as you said, it strips data. So we just have one pixel. But if you select like a, a bigger a bigger yeah. extent, it, it can be seen the proper uh, raster. Let's do use a canvas extent. Yes, yes, yeah, let's try that one. So I just changed the name so we can recognize it. I can do download. There it is. And now you see it's added here to the list, which is a very nice feature. I can say loading canvas. And now we have here uh, the rainfall clipped to the uh, canvas uh, area. So that's uh, very uh, useful. Uh, there's a question here from uh, Bob Semi. What is the resolution of uh, chirps? Natalia? Um, I think I, it's. Um... It's in one or five degrees, but it's quite uh, coarse, as you can see here. Um, yeah, we can uh, so measure it, but you can find it in the metadata also. So it's like uh, five kilometers. Yeah, but it's resample, of course. Yeah. yeah, so for for chirps, it's it's five kilometer data, but for vapor, it is uh, resampled to um, to Ooh. the two hundred fifty meters. So therefore. Yeah, we cannot do magic and add uh, a detail. So it's just that each of these pixels probably consists of uh, 250 meter pixels. I can find that easily in the layer yeah. properties. So here you can uh, get all the information, the minimum, maximum, and uh, the cell size. 
um, which is in uh, degrees, I think, because the projection here is uh, EPSG 4326, which means it's latitude longitude, and that means that this is in uh, degrees. So it's uh, decimal degrees, I guess. So that's nice to download uh, level one in this way. And let's uh, try uh, level two data. Let's go to another um, area. Let me zoom out. Let's go to, um, let's travel to uh, Senegal today. Here. And um, I'm going to choose here then level two. And I want a uh, decadal. And I'm interested in net primary production. And there um, you can see here that it's decad, the 10 day period. So you can choose here a year, let's choose 2019. And you can choose the month. So just choose something like uh, June. And then you can find here the decades uh, for uh, that month. So you can see day 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30. So just choose one here. And um, I will edit this uh, prefix here. So let's do 2019, 06. And I call it 2 for the second set of decade days. And then it will be saved under that name. And let's do a polygon again. So get edges, digitize a polygon. Let's take something here on the, on the edge. So level two is 100 meter. And uh, download, oh, sorry, save polygon coordinates. Don't forget that. And I will download this one. I see, uh, meanwhile, it's downloading. Uh, Marluz gave some uh, answers here. So the resolution of precipitation is five kilometer. The reference evapotranspiration is 20 kilometers and other data sets are 250, 100 or 30, depending on the level. Thank you. And uh, precipitation and reference ET are available daily, decadal, monthly, and in annual timescales. Great that the team members are also in the YouTube, <laughs> so they'll help us out with those questions. Yeah. I always have to look up these details. Um, so we see that the download is complete. We find it here in the list, so I can do a load in Canvas. And you see it's nicely clipped to our polygon. And um, let's uh, zoom to the layer here. And you can then, of course, apply a styling uh, as you are used to. So let's do a single band pseudo color. And uh, probably it makes more sense to show this in uh, levels of green. So here we nicely see uh, the result. So that all works uh, very fine and very smooth. So uh, now, of course, we also want to see the level three data. So the 30 meter. So let's change this to level three. And I want it uh, monthly. I want it for Ethiopia. And I'm going to choose here um, the actual evapotranspiration and interception for Koga. And let's also move to that area. I'm not sure if it's in the, uh, there's this nice new thing. I'm using QGIS 3.24. And it has a geolocator, so a geocoding. So I can see if the place Koga uh, can be found here. And there's probably many places called like that, but it doesn't find one here in uh, Ethiopia. No, I think that Koga is the is the name of the irrigation district. Ah, okay. So it's something like a Let's do uh, Addis. Town or something. Let's do Addis uh, Abeba. We'll find it. <laughs> yeah. 
So if I then click on it, it will bring us to, to Addis. So now we're in Ethiopia. So that's a useful quick uh, tool. It uses the Nominatim uh, geocoder uh, from, um, yeah, from OpenStreetMap from the database. And uh, let's zoom a bit out and see where uh, Koga is near uh, Aydar. So let's uh, focus a bit on this area and see where our data will end up. And um, so actual EVA transpiration for Koga for a month. And I'm going to uh, choose here some data from 2020. Maybe you can do a bit more of zoom in. That is yeah, you know where it is. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I, I, I know where it is. A bit more? A bit more. OK. But we can always zoom after downloading to zoom to the area. Where is called Merawi? The more or less is in that way. Okay, but we we can zoom to the layer. That's no problem because it will just download Koga, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you're using the canvas extent, you will only download whatever is inside the, the joint box. So uh, it's good to have a goons zoom out so you're sure that the uh, exactly. target is inside the scope. So if you don't know the, yeah, if you don't know exactly where it is, like me, then you just um zoom out uh, so you're sure that that part is downloaded. It will not download uh, a wider set. But if you know it, of course, it's good to zoom in. Um, I'm going to change this to something that makes sense. So 2020-08, it has this KOG identifier here. And um, use Canvas Extend. Click uh, Download. Meanwhile, there's a question from Marluz to the WAP plugin team. Is the plugin correcting for conversion factors? Um, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm like, uh, maybe Fabian can help me. I'm sure that for the indicators calculator, uh, the, the, um, the plugin does that. So you don't have to, but I'm not sure if for WAP or catalog also. So our goal was to make the, the, the bridge between the catalog and the plugin as, as direct as possible. So what you're getting from the, the, the catalog when you interact with it is exactly the information that is available in the, in the website. So uh, natural, uh, of course, it's depending on the internet. So if you need internet for the plugin to work out. Uh, so we're updating the information that we're putting in the in the interface uh, on live, and, uh, and the goal there is to for you to have access to the explicit data that the the, the, the database has. So when we are downloading the rasters, we're giving uh, explicitly that um, the, the 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 factor that is given by the by by uh, by Bapor, uh, database. So uh, we actually had this uh, possibility in our hands to make a conversion factor by default, but uh, we wanted to to um, keep or leave the decision of the conversion factor to the user itself. Um, so explicitly is downloading the, the pure raw data. Um, if you want uh, to have a conversion factor, you will have to do it uh, on your hands. But uh, when you're using the indicator calculator, it's using a conversion factor that is uh, commonly used for, for that procedure. I think it's an important uh, question and maybe something that yeah. uh, could be taken in count, in, into account when you have here the measure to indicate the uh, unit that you are downloading. Because some people might be using your plugin without uh, checking the conversion factor uh, in uh, Vapor. So, yeah, exactly. indicated here. That's something we have in mind. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like uh, when like any user of Wapper that goes there, uh, as uh, Hans show uh, at the beginning of the demonstration, uh, uh, you can see, for example, for the data set that you want to download, you can see in the metadata that you have to apply some correction factor to put it in the right units. Like for example, if it is a evapotranspiration map. To put it in millimeters, there is one common unit for 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 this parameter. So yeah, this, 
So, uh, uh, so what Fabian was saying is that the raw data is more or less what you can access here in the Whopper portal as the same. So here it, it is indicated that if you want it in the right units, you have to apply that conversion factor. That in this case for this data set is 0 0.1. So yeah, we thought to add it, but um, to, to add it as a, as a feature of the, of the plugin, but also we are letting the, the user to, to choose that. But for sure, for the indicators calculator, uh, we really need to to have it in the right unit. So that's why we put it by default. Okay, that sounds good. You could also keep um, the choice indeed in the interface uh, of the plugin for the user yeah. to apply the conversion factor or not. But, uh, it's always good to avoid the confusion um, because here we don't know, is it applied or not? That is a bit, uh, I think, the point. Yeah, that's good. Okay, it has been downloaded. So we'll find here the result. Let's uh, load it. And I think uh, it's uh, clipped it to Senegal or something. <laughs> or I'm looking at the long, wrong one. Yeah, that's, that was the previous one that you downloaded. Uh, I think it uh, didn't show up. Let's try it again. Yeah. Maybe you put it, uh, so uh, search for the right one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the right one. Move it to the top here and zoom to the layer. And here yeah. we see where yeah. it is. Now you can see it. Yeah. So, um, actual evapotranspiration. transpiration. Also, let's give it a little style here. And blue, maybe. So you see that it is clipped to uh, the boundary of that uh, um, area of interest for the 30 meter uh, data. So we have tried uh, the different uh, levels and uh, now let's have a look at this uh, indicators calculator where uh, these equations are applied uh, to calculate all kinds of indicators that are useful for um, management of, uh, of agricultural areas, I think. So you see it points to the folder where you have uh, saved your uh, raster. And I'm going to first use this uh, equity uh, indicator and it will let you select uh, uh, the data that is needed for it. So here it needs the actual evapotranspiration or uh, the um, potential evapotranspiration, is it? Um, but here I have already for this area, the um, actual evapotranspiration uh, interception, and I can now uh, calculate the indicator. I don't need to fill in anything more. And it gives me now uh, this value of uh, 20. And um, yeah, Natalia, maybe you can explain what this means. Sure, sure. Uh, so yeah, like before going to the details in, in the indicator, uh, uh, about the indicator equity. So you can see in the in the indicators calculator feature that under the indicator that you selected, you have as uh, Hans said, the, the equation. So that's how um, the plugin is computing the indicator by itself. And it, it, it also points out uh, the rasters required for that. So uh, to don't make a mistake, it will just will allow you uh, to just pick that one. So going again back to the to the indicators. So for example, equity is 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 an irrigation performance uh, indicator. So um, uh, this uh, with this one you can uh, measure if, for example, for your irrigation district you are like uh, providing uh, or alloc allocating water for each water user, right? So with this indicator, for example, you can see if all the water users are having like in an equity way. Uh, the, the access to the water. So more or less is what this uh, indicator is showing. So for example, if we have a, a irrigation district with different water users, uh, some with huge areas and some with small areas, so equity, what, uh, uh, so this indicator, what it says is if you are giving the right amount of water, depending on the requirements of each water user. So more or less, this is the equity indicator. 
and is measured uh, in this is a percent percentage value so of course if you have uh, 100 is that is perfect it's super equity and if you have less than 50 of course is not so great so this just allows you to measure that okay great um let's try another one um you can use um the overall consumed uh, ratio and we see here again the equation and what we see here is uh, the data that it needs so the actual evapotranspiration but also the pcp the precipitation uh, raster um, but i need to uh, download the one belonging to uh, this area first yep. i'm going back to the catalog level three ethiopia and um, but i think the precipitation is uh, level one so i need to choose here level one exactly precipitation and um of the the same uh, date and month so fortunately i still have it written here so you can choose here then august 2020 and i uh, use the canvas extend so i'm sure that it downloads this area um i also add here pog so i'm sure that i don't forget that this is the same area yeah and um as a download. So these two are really good examples because, uh, for example, for equity, the result is a value. And um, for example, for over co overall consumption ratio, that is the one that you selected, the output is a raster. So it's also indicated uh, in, the, in the info of the indicator that you are like uh, selecting, which uh, which is your output or not, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so here we have the actual evapotranspiration that we already had. Then we just calculated or downloaded precipitation and it needs this uh, volume of supplied uh, uh, to command area in millimeters. So what's your suggestion, Natalia? Five you said, right? Yeah, let's put five, just like. And then I can put here an output file name that will also be saved then to our folder. So let's call this uh, OCR. And it's calculated. Here we see now uh, the result of this indicator. So it's a spatial one. It results in a map, um, which we can also then uh, style. So these are the results of our indicator. So that all uh, works fine. If there are any questions in the uh, for the people watching now, please uh, use the uh, the chat. We uh, we have time to answer questions. And um, I think uh, what I would like to um, I would like to go to, to Fabian to uh, tell a little bit about where to find uh, further documentation and information. So I'm going to add uh, Fabian's uh, screen. Thank you, Hans. Um, so um, what we wanted to provide is, uh, as, as mentioned in the, from Natalia and the team itself, uh, we want to provide a connection directly to the database and also assist in some level the process of calculating indicators. Um, so many of the features that you have seen in the user interface are helping to filter out and support um, the, the, the calculation process. And uh, from the experiments that we have done, it's reducing considerably the time that you need to do such process. Uh, so in the, in the repository page that uh, you have access to the um, plugin or through the, our uh, social networks, so you can access the wiki page, which is, which is here located. Uh, in there, we can have uh, the general information of uh, the reason behind the creation of the plugin and its two main functions, with, which, uh, as you ha already have shown, Hans, is to interact with the catalog and to calculate indicators. Um, in addition to that, we're providing the uh, information to uh, getting started, which is covered for uh, installation. 
So you perfectly have shown how it's uh, the process with uh, QAS, uh, how the plugin is still experimental, so it's still open for improvement, uh, thanks to the, the feedback of uh, you guys and the general community. And um, we have several options for that. So right now the, the plugin is accessing the in the QAS repository, which was the option you used. Uh, we also have the option to go directly to uh, the GitHub repository and download the zip file and install the, the plugin through this uh, file type, which is uh, fairly straightforward. It's quite simple and uh, problems uh, free. And uh, at the end, you should get the icon of the Koya's uh, plugin as you had in your user interface. So, um, in addition to that, we have some tutorials which will help the users to get uh, used to the elements that are in the user interfaces, um, the different tabs, uh, their functionalities, and what to expect while uh, performing our different uh, options of interaction. So uh, again, the loading to the database, we also provide some uh, guidelines and support to the interaction with uh, um, Vapor database. Um, as you showed, uh, with the use of the token is something that we cannot skip off. We are accessing the data from, from the database and we have to uh, provide uh, the, the certainty to the query that we're a trustworthy user, so the token is needed. But as a user, you have the, the option to save it in your uh, local uh, memory and uh, use it as many, as many times as you want. So that's a nice support from our site. It's uh, not uh, something that you have to do every time. Uh, in addition to this, we have uh, what is the um, interaction with the catalogs. So the first time you go into the database website, you feel like you're swimming in, in an ocean of data and uh, really hard to find a way to move around it. So um, the um, online working that we are using to update the options that we have in, in the user interface lets you know uh, which data is available, which one is new, which one doesn't show up uh, for maybe for some reasons inside uh, on the side of the, of the database. So what you get here is what is uh, available and it's uh, formatting in, in such a way that's easy to, to uh, navigate through it. So uh, we have some uh, descriptions about the meaning of uh, the filters, how they interact with the uh, resulting uh, raster type, um, uh, the structure of the names. So this uh, name was uh, is, is important. So ev everyone knows exactly which kind of raster are interacting with, uh, the country, the, the year, um, the time frame specifically, and. Um, Again, in order to avoid uh, uh, complications, so the, the need of download a whole country while you're trying to do your project, we uh, developed the alternative to uh, use the coordinate selections. So you don't have to wait anymore to download the full raster, uh, which may complicate things in, in time resources and uh, memory support. So now you have the, the option to limit your project to a specific Canva extent or to the coordinate selection, which makes uh, things faster. And um, you can also use the diff different tools so that uh, QIS provides. So the bookmarks helps a lot with that. You just can change fast uh, the canvas extent and you're ready to go. Um, for the um, indicator calculators, we know that uh, there is still users that have uh, this, their specific folder with some rasters that they have been working on. So uh, as I said, the, the, the user interface is trying to help uh, to avoid mistakes. So any indicator that you're uh, selecting is going to filter or scan the folder that you have selected as a workspace for the specific um, name structure that will uh, give the information of, of the raster. So if you want to work with your own rasters, uh, you have to stick with the nomenclature that's given by the uh, information of the indicator uh, calculator, and you will have access to all the features. So it's a bit um, uh, a, a trick and also annoying, but it's also good 
a good practice to uh, have your rasters properly labeled and properly organized. Um, so as a final uh, comment in, in this area, we have uh, our issues um, option open for all of you guys. Any kind of problem that you run while interacting with the plugin or uh, any possible improvement that you feel that you would like to have in, in, in the future, uh, we're open to it and we will uh, open uh, receive your suggestions with the best attitude and uh, try to implement it as soon as possible. Thank you. That was really uh, useful to see uh, this whole documentation uh, available for us and to learn more about it, but also if we um, indeed find uh, issues that we can uh, report them here and uh, that will be taken up here by the team. I've already uh, interacted with them with some of the, the issues, which has been great. Um, yeah, just uh, we, we have a little time left, 50 minutes. Um, if there are any more questions from the chat, please uh, let us know. Uh, I would like to ask the team, what, is, um, what are your plans for the near future? So from the plugin side, uh, we are trying to expand and to, uh, I mean, the difference between the version one and the version two in terms of uh, the user experience have changed a lot, uh, has improved a lot. Uh, so um, that's part of the interaction we have with the community. So we're expecting to uh, receive uh, happy uh, feedback and also suggestions to further improve uh, the plugin. Um, that's from the plugin side. Um, of course, from the team side, we'd like to have um, more opportunities like this with the, uh, the community to interact with them and to get to know uh, what is needed. So uh, we're uh, certain that we're helping a lot with uh, the functionalities of the plugin, uh, but we don't want to stop there. Sounds good. I think after seeing uh, what you can do with the plugin, uh, there are lots of people here who uh, yeah, who want to learn more about it and try it, and maybe even organizations uh, want to have trainings on it or have certain features developed by you guys that are useful for their day-to-day um, -day work in the uh, agricultural sector using this kind of data. So I see here uh, from Marluz, congratulations on the launch. I think it has been really cool to have you here as a guest uh, on the channel to launch this uh, version 2.0. It's uh, really Thank cool. You. Thank you so much. Welcome. So just before closing off, I don't see uh, more questions here in the in the chat. Uh, I just want to show people where to find more um, open materials because it's Open Data Day and next week is Open um, Education Week. Uh, so I'm just going to show some uh, some things that we have available for you. One moment. So um, you might know that there's a GIS Open Courseware uh, website where you can find uh, a lot of free courses on many different uh, topics, but all with 100% open source uh, software. And you can find uh, courses available in different uh, languages. Uh, soon we'll launch another one in uh, Dutch on the field data collection. Um, there's this very nice one on processing uh, drone images with web ODM. Um, but last year for Open Data Day, uh, I compiled a list of uh, open data resources here. And uh, here you can also find Vapor, of course, but uh, also a lot of other resources. If you miss anything, uh, please let me know. I will add it to the list. And on Twitter, I started the thread on um, uh, QGIS plugins for uh, downloading open data. So I've uh, added a few that I know by myself which are, which are very useful, like now this uh, nice plugin, the WAP plugin, but there's also the MapTiler plugin that you've seen, SRTM downloaded plugin, so a lot of different things. So if I miss anything, please uh, let me know. Um, I think that was all I wanted to uh, share with you. And um, yeah, looking forward to see you again on the YouTube channel or in some of our other activities that we do with the IHG Delft and the team. And, um, it was a pleasure to uh, to have our guests uh, here. Axai was dropping in and out. Let me add him also here. So uh, thank you very much for joining. I'm going to close the session and uh, hope to see you again soon.
Yeah, thank you for the invitation. It was like the perfect like space or environment for launching our our our, our web plugin version too, and better in the open data day. So it was a really a special moment for us, and hope that uh, all the users just have a good experience. And as Fabian showed, just let us uh, or give us your 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 feedback in in our GitHub. Uh, so thank you, Hans. It was a really nice experience for us. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.